Surprise University. A service of Babylon Theater. Presents. Education warmed over. Postmodern education for the modern world. Real SU classes. Repackaged and produced. Just for you. To watch anytime. On this station. Tonight's program is... Hello, I'm Rimmer Werver. I'm an intern and a graduate student at Babylon Theater, in Babylon, you know, that's my major, specifically history of, and I'm teaching this class on Babel 101 and a few of the others. <laughs> Are we not? I'm just having the time of my life. You know, when I'm done with this, uh, I, I will have spent going up on to nine years in graduate school. You know, I started this quest back in high school. And I mean, it adds up to like 25 years of studying the B-Boys. And I'm, I'm also like, you know, a fan. I'm a fan from forever. And I, and I got, I got stuff. You know, I got ticket stubs. And, and now I'm here teaching freshmen how to think in Babel. I mean, how, what? And that's something, you know, I'm still learning. I mean, these guys are so complex. Uh, I remember me and member uh, hearing uh, Return of the Tuna. It was uh, on the radio. Uh, we were, I don't know, grade school, you know, and and we were transported to like so many different worlds. and then And then later... When the box set came out and it had the original jam on it, and me and member remember, it was it was just exactly the same, <laughs> only different. I mean, listen, listen to this. Just keep walking west, Jack, <laughs> right through this door. I'm so hungry. Oh, we're bound to find that tuna mine sooner or later. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Isn't that a tuna hole up ahead? A whole tuna? I just hope it isn't another garage. Oh. I can see it. It, it is. is a whole tuna. Yes, and this drawbridge is opening. No, that's his mouth. Look at those cavities. Oh, look at those teeth. Wow, was that a bat? No, it's a bird. A seabird. Hey, can we hey, make it in? Hey, make a run for it. We'll get in. Oh, hey. What was that? Excuse me. Hey, and I what was that? Hey, there's a Friday! There's a Friday! Hey, there's a Friday! Oh, no. Friday! 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 Friday!
since the discovery of the Babel verse. I mean, that's how I, I've been thinking, what, what if they bat, bought Cog? Oh, or merged or something. You know, I, I mean, source upon source upon source. And these guys got it from the A and A. Speaking of source, I mean, that's what they say. Uh, well, the whole story of how they got to be chosen messengers, seriously, it's so other verse and poofy. I'm not even sure they know how it was. But I asked Axel Mundy, who is a friend of Greg's on tape, and I kind of chopped up what he said. But listen to, listen to him about the old days. Well, I went down to Yucatan with some people, and uh, it was like about 80, 1985, I guess. We were there to see Chichen Itza, the, um, you know, the famous Mayan. I told them I was going to go up to the top of the pyramid, but I, I, I got up and I walked back into the, there was this little chamber up at the top of this pyramid, man, and, and it was like, it was a tiny little room, but it was pitch black in there. So I went in there and I stood there for a while, and I got this strange feeling, I was like, here. I don't know, it was weird, so I got out of there and I went back and sat down on the top step there of the pyramid, which is the pyramid's really steep, it was really straight down, you know. So it's kind of hard to climb up and down it. Well, I sat there for a bunch, for a long time. Anyway, I knew that it was getting to be time that I had to leave. So I got up and I, I took one back, one turn, around, turn back through that, uh, that little room at the top there, but I just felt like I was being washed or something. I, I couldn't explain it. I felt like somebody was in there, but and there wasn't anybody in there. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so I started going down the pyramid, and I, I just didn't want to get off the pyramid. I just wanted to stay there, man. It was so intense. I mean, every time I took a step down, I felt like more like more resistance to going down. It was like physically, I felt like I just was being held back, you know. And so I kept going. I kept going. I got down to the bottom of the pyramid and I, I took one look back up to the top of it, you know, and, and I, I started crying. My, my face was dripping wet. I was crying so hard. It was weird. But I, I wanted to keep stop myself and go back, but I couldn't. I knew I couldn't. Every step I took, I got more emotional and more sad. It was like somebody up there was calling me saying, come back, come back, you know, you belong to me. I belong to you. Well, I don't know. I thought maybe it was a dead priest or something, you know, a ghost or whatever. But it's the weirdest experience I ever had. I, I call it my my mystical experience. I don't know really if that's what it was, but I felt like I was in contact with some kind of god or something for, for me. All right. <clears throat> okay. Take it easy, Greg. Wow, man. <laughs> and it was only when they got able and they started naming things you know like speaking back uh to the a and a sort of thing then they finally were able to tell us about what it was instead of just you know being there anyway personally i think it was oval rubber who had the first talk back you know i mean listen I want you to hear this. His his retelling of his hot tub vision. Listen to this. Oval rubber, please. Greg from Babylon Theater. He's expecting me. Greg, hey. So glad to hear from you again. Please tell us the story of the hot tub experience. Well, it was, you know, it was the first night out. I mean, Effie and I had just left. Salt Lake that very day on our trip to uh, Houston, Canada. So he stayed at his Motel 6. Anyway, so I went down to the, I went downstairs and found the pool and the hot tub. And it was feeling really great. I was sitting there for a while. And the whole, the whole tub was steamy. It was full of, like, steamy, like the refillable steamy, you know. <laughs> the thing is that I opened my eyes and there was this person standing. I could see them, the lower half of their body standing in the on the hot tub he had kind of long hair he looked kind of scraggly i thought maybe he was like a street person or something and he wandered in he was wearing like a it looks like a toga or something i don't know 
and he was standing there looking right at me. He said, oh, he said, they were really weird voices, oh, bull, oh, bull, I have come to tell you that you are going to be my emissary of doubt and surprise. And I said, well, wow, who are you? And he said, my name is Gull, but I'm called Gully. Wow, I thought to myself, this guy can't know that. I'm the only one that ever found his name in that book in my seminary. So I decided to make my church the Golly Church somehow. Well, this guy here was telling me, he said he was Golly, and he was, my, he was here to baptize me or something, I don't know. He tried to pull me under the water, but I didn't let him, but I got, I let him put, splash some water on my head. While I, was, while I was wiping the water out of my eyes, when I, opened, when I looked up again, he, there was nobody there. He was gone. Gone. I was freaked out, man, I can tell you. I thought, this is uh, weird, it's weird, or it's very, uh, very special, because uh, it's here our first day out, and I'm getting this vision of Golly coming and talking to me. Boy, I was, I was weirded out. So I, I kind of stumbled out of the place, uh, and went and made my way back up to the room. I really, when I got in the room, first thing I think came out of the bathroom, she looked at me, she, she said, oh God, what happened, honey? Story, I mean, I was crying by then, I was, I was literally in tears. It's such a great story, Oval. Thanks very much for talking to us. We really appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. You know, for Greg and Nolan, that was a wrong load to hole. But for you and me, what they're doing for us now, this is like flower of power. <laughs> you know, soon the Babel verse is going to be the you verse for all of us. And then Babel will be the lingua franca, the, the common language, how we conduct our lives. Can you imagine? I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm, I'm so glad that I am the one who gets to do beat this class. I, I, oh, I could go on. But no, I can't. No, seriously. Homework. You got to have this. Remember a time when you had an epiphany, right? Uh, symbolate. I, I, symbolate. Do some symbolation. I promise we'll get back to it next session. And finally, be here now 100%. Now, I'm not just talking about showing up every time, and I'm glad that you do. I'm talking about being fully here when you're here. Be here now, and I'll see you next week. All right. Bye.